that brief moment when you think David Lynch is returning to the world of Twin Peaks to resolve cliffhangers and tie up loose ends? Tricked you, fucker. Twin Peaks The Return has just been an incredible, mesmerizing, and haunting journey back into the world first created by David Lynch and Mark Frost in 1990. I wasn't old enough to watch the original Twin Peaks, as in, I wasn't even born yet, so I cannot imagine the thrill of being an original fan who waited 25 years to see the return of this iconic series. For many years, fans believed that the season 2 finale would be the last episode of the entire series, and unfortunately that episode ended on a cliffhanger. How's Annie? How's Annie? How's Annie? We still don't know if Annie is okay, but Twin Peaks The Return has answered and resolved many questions, but as with many David Lynch projects, explanations only lead to more questions. There's so many questions. I have so many questions, David. Believe it or not, Eraserhead is my most spiritual film. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why, we'll elaborate on that. No, I won't. Um. <laughs> David Lynch has described the return as Dale Cooper's journey back to Twin Peaks. Over the past 18 episodes, we've watched two forms of Dale Cooper slowly make their way back to the northwestern town where it all started. One form of Dale Cooper is an evil doppelganger who is being controlled by the entity known as Bob who murdered Laura Palmer in the original series. The second Dale Cooper is the real Dale Cooper, but he cannot seem to remember who he is. After 25 years of supernatural imprisonment, he has returned to the real world as Douglas Jones, better known as Dougie. I think many fans have expected and really wanted to see a showdown between these two Coopers by the end of the season. It's fun to watch these two extremes of Dale Cooper's personality operate in this world. You have the evil Cooper, who obviously represents the worst parts of a human being's personality the impulsiveness, the capacity and tendency for violence, and then you have Dougie Jones, who kind of represents that innocence that Cooper had in the original series. Cooper always had this childlike curiosity and amazement of the world in which he lived. Diane, I'm holding in my hand a small box of chocolate bunnies. But now Dougie Jones is almost Cooper as a toddler, having to relearn how to be Dale Cooper. In part two, Dale Cooper is told by a skeletal tree, aka the evolution of the arm, aka a really fucked up version of Groot, that in order for him to return to the real world, Bob must return to the Black Lodge. The persona of Dougie Jones was actually manufactured by Bob as a decoy, as a way to subvert the power of the Black Lodge. Bob was supposed to be transported back into the Lodge, but Dougie Jones takes his place. The real Cooper then returns to the real world and takes the place of Dougie Jones, and the struggle for existence begins. Now, up until now, Bob has really been the main villain of Twin Peaks and The Return. He has tortured, murdered, raped, and possessed innocent people, but we learn in Part 17 that there is an even more powerful and sinister entity at play. In the first scene of Part 17, Gordon tells Albert that he has kept something from him for 25 years. He tells Albert and Tammy about the existence of an extreme negative force called Zhao Dei, which is now simply referred to as Judy. Judy was discovered by Major Briggs, and he, Gordon Cole, and Dale Cooper devised a plan to find Judy. Major Briggs then disappeared. The existence of Judy was mentioned by FBI agent Philip Jeffries in the Twin Peaks prequel film, Fire Walk With Me. I'm not gonna talk about Judy. In fact, we're not gonna talk about Judy at all. Gordon? Two years after his sudden disappearance, Philip Jeffries briefly reappears at the FBI headquarters in 1989. Cole tells Albert that Philip Jeffries was close to finding Judy, but then he disappeared as well. Cole then tells Albert that Cooper told him that if Cooper were to disappear, Cole must do everything in his power to find him, and that Cooper had a plan to kill two birds with one stone. The two birds with one stone line is a callback to part one, where the fireman tells Cooper to remember two names, and he also tells him to remember two birds with one stone. It's unknown if Cooper was devising a plan to destroy both Bob and Judy, or if his plan was to destroy Bob and then save Laura Palmer's life. Judy is also mentioned in Part 15, when Bob meets with Philip Jeffries, who has now become a giant teapot, tea kettle thing. 
You know, if you're going to recast David Bowie, I guess that's how you do it. Bob demands to know who Judy is, and Jeffries tells him that he's already met Judy, and he gives him a set of coordinates. This scene is very interesting because it shows that Bob is not aware of the existence of Judy, and he seems to be afraid of its power. Bob's main goal throughout the return has been to find these coordinates, and when he does find them, it leads him to a portal in Twin Peaks. The portal leads him to the White Lodge, where he finds the fireman and a giant floating head that belongs to Major Garland Briggs. The screen that the fireman uses to observe the real world shows a picture of the portal and then shows a picture of Sarah Palmer's house, which has made some fans believe that the coordinates to Judy were supposed to send Bob to Sarah, who is being possessed by Judy. More on that later. Instead of sending him to Sarah Palmer's house, the fireman swipes left and displays a picture of the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department. The fireman then transports Bob to the Sheriff's Department, which is ultimately a trap set by the fireman and possibly Major Briggs. Bob is finally defeated inside the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department by Freddy Skies, aka the immortal Iron Fist. After Bob is shot by Lucy, the woodsmen try to revive his body like they did in Part 8, after Bob was shot by Ray. The Bob orb that we saw in Part 8 begins to float out of Dale Cooper's doppelganger and then attacks the real-life Dale Cooper. Freddy shatters the orb into pieces, which then float into the ceiling. Cooper places the owl ring on his doppelganger, the body is transported to the waiting room, and then it is destroyed. Bob has been defeated, and everyone lives happily ever after. Tricked you. Now, the portal that Bob uses in the beginning of Part 17 was actually revealed in Part 14 when Frank, Hawk, Bobby, and Andy discover the portal based on instructions left by Major Briggs. Here they find Nadeau, the eyeless woman who helped Cooper return to the real world in Part 3. They bring Nadeau to the holding cells in the Sheriff's Department. The moment when Dale Cooper spots Nadeau, a superimposed image of his face appears on screen. He appears to be in a state of bewilderment, and his puzzled face remains on screen as the subsequent events play out. He embraces Nado, touches her hand, and the eyeless woman is revealed to be the real Diane. Diane's doppelganger, who was created by Bob, was transported back into the waiting room in Part 16 after attempting to kill Cole, Albert, and Tammy. There are three very important lines spoken during this sequence. Now, there are some things that will change. The past dictates the future. We live inside a dream. The superimposed Cooper could represent a daydream that is happening inside of Cooper's head, and that this sequence is being imagined or remembered by Cooper in the future or the past. Cooper then mentions that there are some things that will change, and the past dictates the future. We later see this new future play out in Part 18. After Bob is defeated and Cooper and Diane are reunited, Cooper, Diane, and Cole are transported to Cooper's old room in the Great Northern Hotel from the original two seasons. Cooper enters the room alone and is escorted by Mike to a meeting with Philip Jeffries. Cooper asks Jeffries to send him back in time to the day that Laura Palmer was murdered. Before Cooper travels back in time, Jeffries tells Cooper where he can find Judy, the negative force that seems to be keen on Laura Palmer's murder. He shows Cooper the Owl Cave symbol, which then transforms into three numbers, 7, 0, and 8, the same address of Sarah Palmer's house. There is some evidence that points to Sarah Palmer being Judy or being possessed by Judy in some way. Most of the Sarah Palmer scenes in season 3 are bizarre and disturbing. She comes across as indifferent to the world and when approached, she can become psychotic. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I know what you mean. I am trying to tell you that you have to watch out. Things can happen. Something happened to me. After refusing the advances of an unknown man in Part 14, Sarah Palmer removes her face and reveals the inside of the Black Lodge, which is the most horrifying and disturbing thing I've, I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what the fuck? This is in contrast to her daughter, Laura. In Part 1, Laura removes her face while talking to Cooper and reveals the inside of the White Lodge. 
So it appears that Sarah is an agent of the Black Lodge, whereas Laura is an agent of the White Lodge. It seems that Laura Palmer's murder is an important step towards Judy and the Black Lodge manifesting their power in the real world. Laura Palmer's death in season one leaves Sarah grief-stricken, completely detached from reality, and most importantly, she is vulnerable. This allows Judy to gradually take control of Sarah Palmer's mind. Many fans have speculated that this little girl from Part 8 is actually Sarah Palmer as a teen, and when the nuclear explosion opened a portal to the Black Lodge, it allowed Judy to implant herself in the young Sarah Palmer. This scene takes place in 1956, so the ages do match up. The actress who portrays Sarah Palmer is 76 years old, which would make this young girl around 15 at the time of the scene. After witnessing the creation of the Black Lodge on Earth, the birth of Bob, and the deployment of the Woodsman, the fireman creates creates a Laura Palmer Dragon Ball to counter the power of the Black Lodge. But when Laura is killed by Bob, Judy was presented an opportunity to take control of Sarah. That is why Cooper desperately wants to save Laura's life. If Laura isn't murdered by Bob in Fire Walk With Me, then perhaps the power of the Black Lodge can be subdued and eventually destroyed. For a moment, it appears that Cooper was able to prevent Laura Palmer's murder. Laura accompanies Cooper through the forest instead of meeting her demise at the hands of Bob, and her wrapped-up corpse from the pilot episode fades from existence. But before Cooper is able to bring Laura home, she disappears altogether. There's a possibility that Judy was able to transport Laura to an alternate reality before she could be saved by Cooper. This alternate reality could be viewed as a prison for Laura, who is now an apparent murderer going by the name of Carrie Page. The name Page is an interesting choice, since this could represent the missing page from Laura Palmer's diary. Cooper is able to travel to this alternate reality by using information he received from the fireman in the opening scene. In addition to remembering Richard and Linda, the fireman tells Cooper to remember three numbers, 430. Exactly 430 miles. Cooper travels into this alternate reality with Diane and finds that his identity has changed. After spending an intimate night with Diane, he awakens the next morning and finds that Diane is gone. She leaves a note addressed to a Richard and explains why she left. The note is signed, Linda. This is another great callback to the opening scene. In this new reality, Cooper is Richard and Diane is Linda. Now, Cooper is eventually able to locate Laura in this alternate reality by stopping at a diner named Judy's. A bit on the nose for David Lynch, don't you think? I mean, he's got to give us one, right? Now living in Odessa, Texas, Laura, or now Carrie, has no recollection of her previous life as Laura Palmer. The duo embark on a road trip to Twin Peaks. Cooper intends to take Laura to the home she grew up in to try and jumpstart her memory. When they arrive at Twin Peaks, they find that the house is being occupied by a woman named Alice Tremont, who bought the house from a Mrs. Chalfont. These two names are a callback to the character Mrs. Tremont and her grandson from the original series. Mrs. Tremont, also known as Mrs. Chalfont, was an elderly woman who used to live in the Fat Trout Trailer Park in Deer Meadows with her grandson, and they later moved to Twin Peaks. Mrs. Tremont and her grandson were first introduced in the second season of Twin Peaks when Donna Hayward visited Mrs. Tremont with a Meals on Wheels delivery. Laura Palmer used to deliver Meals on Wheels to Mrs. Tremont, but after Laura's death, Death, Donna Hayward picks up her route. The woman and grandson are revealed to be Black Lodge entities in the Fire Walk With Me prequel. They gift Laura Palmer a doorway painting, which is really a doorway to the Black Lodge. They are also shown having a meeting above a convenience store with Bob, the arm, two woodsmen, the electrician, and a jumping man. And this is probably the same convenience store that we've seen throughout the return, which acts as a portal into the Black Lodge. The names Tremon and Chalfont being mentioned in this final scene prove that the power of the Black Lodge is present in this alternate timeline. Now, this final scene is just haunting. It's disturbing, it's sad, it's puzzling. It left me feeling empty, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. In this scene, it appears that Dale Cooper has once again failed to bring Laura home. Laura becomes aware of her situation after hearing the voice of Sarah call out her name from the pilot episode. Laura belts out a final haunting screech of despair, and the world keeps spinning. This ending 
ending is controversial. It's not definitive. It leaves us with more questions than answers, but I love ambiguous endings, and this has only been my interpretation of the events. There are many theories out there about the ending to Part 18, and I'm sure there are going to be dozens more theories throughout the years. To me, the ending was perfect because it captures the disturbing reality of failure and the never-ending battle between good and evil. Duality has always been one of the main themes of Twin Peaks, two Dale Coopers, one evil and one innocent. Twin Peaks, a town that provides portals into two supernatural realms, the Black Lodge and the White Lodge. The central focus of the show's initial mystery is the death of Laura Palmer, a troubled girl who was living a double life at the time of her death. The townsfolk of Twin Peaks viewed Laura as good and wholesome, but in truth, she was suffering from abuse and in turn abused her own body and mind through drug use and sexual acts. In fact, many characters in the original Twin Peaks were living double lives. The town is filled with infidelity and betrayal. Characters are being forced to balance the good and evil inside of them. The return can be viewed as a balancing act between the black and white lodges, an equilibrium between good and evil. In part 8, we learn that the first nuclear test in 1945 opened a gateway to, or might have even created, the Black Lodge. We witness the birth of Bob, the woodsman, and a moth-like creature. We also witness the birth of Laura Palmer, who was created by the firemen as a way to counteract the evil of the Black Lodge. There's a scene in Part 13 where Sarah Palmer is watching a looped boxing match that features a boxer in white shorts and a boxer in black shorts. They fight, one falls to the ground, and then they fight again, and again, and again, an endless loop that represents the infinite battle between the Black and White Lodge. Electricity also plays a big role in the return, which can also be viewed as a form of balance. Electricity. A technique that was first used in David Lynch's Eraserhead, an electrical hum usually plays in the background of scenes that feature black or white lodge activity. Outlets and electrical currents were used as modes of transportation, and Cooper actually shocks himself back to sanity when he sticks a fork in an electrical outlet. If the motivations of the black and white lodges are to maintain supernatural balance, then electricity can be viewed as nature's way of maintaining equilibrium. Positive and negative currents that aren't good or evil, they're just electrons flowing from positive to negative to maintain balance. The ending to Part 18 reminded me of David Lynch's Lost Highway, a film that begins where it ends, about a man who is trapped in an unending loop of violence, imprisonment, reincarnation, an infinite fever dream that cannot be resolved or reversed. This this is how I interpreted the ending of The Return. No matter how hard Cooper tries to save the ones he loves, Caroline, Annie, Laura, Diane, you cannot escape or eradicate evil from the world. Whether he destroyed the universe by meddling in the past or was imprisoned in an alternate reality where his identity is lost, Cooper failed, and his hero's journey may be finished. What year is this? Unless we get a season four which I kind of want, but I kind of don't want because I think this is a perfect ending, but whatever. David Lynch, I want to see you do Star Trek. I want to see David Lynch's science fiction crazy Star Trek show. No, I won't. <laughs> um, <laughs>